Okay, welcome to the teaching video on alternation of generations, a concept that a lot of students struggle with. Uh, you're going to see example, or you're going to see questions on this on your final and on your unit exam. So we thought it again beneficial to do a little teaching video on this. Uh, at the end of this, if you have any issues with it, just give me a email, and we can take a look at uh, see if we can uh, see if we can rectify it for you. So let's get right to it. I'll tell you the best, probably the best way to do this type of uh, teaching video is to kind of simulate exactly what you can incorporate in your study strategies in order to be able to, uh, uh, like I say, incorporate this into long-term memory. So this is what this is, alternation of generations. Generations. Okay, now of course we can't do this, plants can. So what you actually see so in this case, let's say a fern or a tree or any of that kind of stuff. What you actually see is the dominant feature of that generation. And that is generally the sporophyte. Dominant. So this is the dominant generation. And you need to know, again, study that the sporophytes are always diploid. So what you actually see, the physical tree that you see is this sporophyte, diploid. And it's going to produce, and you can see right inside the name, it's going to produce spores. And this is the only time that this occurs, the process being meiosis. So meiosis is the process that is going to produce you these spores. Okay, And these spores, and there's lots of these spores, and they're all genetically different because meiosis produ uh, produces genetically different, in this case, spores, but they're always going to be haploid. We know that meiosis, or meiosis is a reduction division. So it's going to cut those chromosomal numbers in half. No more homologous pairing going on in those individual spores. Okay, It's the only time that that occurs. We would never have a circumstances or circumstances where we would want to reduce the number once and then reduce it again somewhere else in the cycle. Never happen. Now, the advantage of alternations of generation is that these spores can lay dormant for 10, 15 years until there's optimal growing conditions. It'd be the equivalent of our sperm or our eggs going out, having a life of their own, and only when it was optimal come together for fertilization to produce the zygote. Of course, we can't do that, but these plants that uh, undergo alternations of generations can. So when it is optimal, and only then, these guys will produce through a process called meiosis, and again, my, or sorry, mitosis, mitosis will always produce you genetically, uh, genetic clones with the same number of chromosomes. So that process is going to produce you a, a gametophyte. And this gametophyte is often a secondary growth that often you don't even see, but it's secondary growth on the actual sporophyte. So this would be the non-dominant generation. Okay, secondary growth. And again, because it was mitosis, this guy would be haploid. Half the number of chromosomes of that, as that sporophyte contained, okay? So this gametophyte now, uh, when it's ready, through again mitosis, because again, we said meiosis never occurs again in this cycle, will produce you a, and you can see that right in the name, a gamete. Okay? And in this case, we will have a different gametophyte also producing another gamete. And this is where we get genetic variation, genetic differences, right? So the benefit of alternation of generations is we have these spores that can stay dormant for many years, but we also get the benefit of sexual reproduction. These two come together and that process, of course, is called fertilization. And that's going to produce me a diploid zygote. Zygot, zygote. Okay, we bring those two, and again, these gametes are still haploid. 
right? It was mitosis that uh, was the process that produced them. So uh, if we started out with a haploid gametophyte, we're going to get a haploid uh, gamete. Come together, now the two ends come together to produce a diploid zygote. And this guy will grow up using mitosis, same as our zygotes, and produce a mature sporophyte. Best way to study this, rewrite this a number of times. You rewrite this, you'll embed that into long-term memory. So we're alternating between a dominant sporophyte, diploid, and a non-dominant haploid gametophyte. That's where this alternations of generations come from. Okay, any issues with this, give me an email, we'll go over it. Uh, but again, good strategy is just to draw this cycle out a number of times and uh, you should be good on an exam. Again, on exams, what they're going to look for is what stages are haploid. So sporophytes are haploid, uh, haploid, gametophytes are haploid, and gametes are haploid. Then they're going to ask you maybe what stages in this alternations of generations are diploid. Well, diploid would be the sporophyte and the zygote. And the other thing they may ask you is chromosomal numbers based on that or where meiosis occurs. Meiosis only occurs to produce these spores. Never again does it occur. Everything else is mitosis. Okay, so those are some of the questions they may potentially ask you. Again, any issues, give me an email. We'll go over it. But thanks, guys. Talk to you soon.